was just so persnickety about it, I guess you would say. Finally, the deacon, after a while, took about all of that he could, and he's, he asked him one day, he said, he said, Father, why, why are you that way about the altar flowers? And the father said, oh, I guess it's just my alter ego. You know, Mark Twain once said, I've been complimented many times, and they always embarrass me. I always feel they have just not said enough. <laughs> oh, well. You know, the, the Latin word for I in English, the Latin word is ego. You may not have known that. But ego is the word I in English. And so what is an ego? Well, it means my, my sense of self-worth, which can be exaggerated at times. You know, when we have an exaggerated ego, we would... Somebody might say about us, we're somewhat conceited. And synonyms for an exa exaggerated ego are pride and, um, oh, you know, things like being prideful or, or, or filled with pride. In our gospel reading today, uh, in Matthew, the 20th uh, chapter, Jesus has just told his disciples as they're about to, to embark toward Jerusalem that he was going to go there that he was going to be handed over by the, by the police of that day and time to the chief priests and the scribes. They would condemn him to death, and he would be handed over to the Roman Gentiles. He would be mocked. He would be scourged and beaten, and he would be crucified. And on the third day, he would rise from the dead. Somehow, this, this kind of went over their heads. They just kind of stonewalled what they were hearing because they're, they're so accustomed to seeing Jesus do such incredible miracles. He's able to, in, in any situation, straighten out any difficulty of understanding. He can explain the Old Testament like nobody had ever explained it. And so after a little while during the day, the mother of two of the sons of the 12 disciples, the sons of Zebedee, came with her sons, and, and she did him homage because she wanted to ask him for something. And he said to her, what is it that you wish? And she said, she said, Rabbi, these two sons of mine, I'd like for you to allow them to sit on your right hand and your left when you come into your kingdom. Well, he listened to that, and he said, well, you know, they would have to drink the chalice that I'm going to drink. And they said to him, we're able. And boy, were they able. They were both crucified themselves later on in time. But he said, to, to give you the place of sitting at my right hand and my left is not mine to give. It's my father's to give for whom it has been prepared. The other 10 disciples heard about this. And the word of God says they were indignant. That means in Texas vernacular, they were ticked off. They were so furious at these two guys and their mother. And you know what it is they're furious about? They didn't ask first. I'm sure that's what's going on. But Jesus summoned them and he said, hey, you know, the Gentile rulers, they lord it over everybody and the great ones exercise authority over each other. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great in the kingdom of God shall be the servant of all. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. In other words, he says, if you want to be great in the kingdom, serve other people. In today's gospel, the, the disciples are arguing over who is the greatest. They've already done this. And then these two guys ask if they can sit on his right hand and his left in his kingdom. These two guys have an ego problem. Well, I can tell you the other 10 guys had an ego problem too because they were angry. They were in. They didn't ask first, as I've already said. Hmm. 
for substitutes for God. They were asking for power or wanting power. They were asking for honor or they were wanting honor. Now, it's not wrong to have power or honor. Neither one of these things are wrong. But if if we ask with the wrong desire or the wrong motive, our ego switches the, this, this need for power or this need for honor into a God substitute, which is really nothing more than an idol. And so we find James, the Apostle James, describing this in James 3 when he says, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not come from above. It's earthly. It's sensual. It's demonic. You know, the one with the great ego problem is Satan. Satan has the most selfish ego of any of all of God's creation. As a matter of fact, the great prophet Isaiah in the 14th chapter, speaking about him, calls him the morning star. And he says this about what Satan has been saying. He says, in your heart you said, I will, I will scale my way or I will go to the heights of heaven. I, I will set my throne above the stars of God. I will take, I will take my seat on the mount of the assembly. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. And I will be like the Most High. Selfish ego is the very nature of Satan. That's why James, the Apostle James, goes on to say in that passage I read earlier out of James 3, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil, evil thing is there. This orientation causes all kinds of problems, and I think we all know about it. That's why James goes on in the next chapter, a passage you're very familiar with in James 4. Where do wars and fights come from? They come from your desires that battle within you. What are these disciples fighting over? Positions of honor and power. And James goes on to say, you lust and you don't have, you murder, you covet, you cannot obtain, you fight, you war. You do not have because you do not ask. So what's the way out for us? We all have ego issues. Well, I think all of you do. I'm not so sure about me. No, we all have ego issues. And so... Jesus said, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, serve other people. You know, church is the best place to put in check our alter ego by checking my ego at the cross. And I do that by becoming a servant. Otherwise, we'll always have, be having a God substitute. And all God substitutes are nothing more than idols. So what is your alter ego? What is it that distracts you from God? You know what it is. <laughs> the psalmist said, my sin is ever before me. I don't think I need to point it out to you. You know what it is. Besides all that, we're really forbidden to judge each other. And during the Lenten season, we are especially to become vigilant about not judging each other, but judging ourselves. The other thing I want to say is that we really need a God ego. That we get our kudos from God. And we seek to get our kudos and our attaboys and our attagirls from God. And you know, if you're a married, if you're married, you really should be finding your ego needs met by your spouse. And so most everything else will cause us to have an alter ego, which is nothing more than an idol. 
So learn to catch yourself when you're engaging with these demons. You may feel envy, or as James said, boasting. You might be bragging a bit too much. You might even create a little white lie to tell some stories about yourself to make yourself look good. Dear ones, during the Lenten season, the reason we fast, the reason we say no to each other is because we're working on saying no to me, myself and I, my big fat ego, and checking it at the cross and learning to be the servant of all. Lord Jesus Christ, almighty Son of God, you yourself said, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your great service for us. We thank you for your great love. Lord, we even to this day, your great love serves us, heals us, restores us, and helps us check our own ego at the cross. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've given us the great example of how Satan said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Lord, instead, you've called us to seek first the kingdom of God and God's will above every other will in all of creation. Give us that grace this Lent season, we pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Let us recite our ancient faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. 